curve, the point is something like uh, twenty-five five is on that curve. Square root of twenty-five is five. So if I said find the slope of the curve at this point, which one would you plug in? Twenty-five. Plug in twenty-five. Do I'll do it real quick. What's square root of twenty-five? Five. Times two? Ten. One tenth. Very easy. You just found the slope of this curve. It's one tenth. That's pretty flat, right? Pretty flat, but still positive. One tenth. Could you find the equation of tangent line? Absolutely. You have one tenth, x1, y1, plug it into that, and now you have yourself the equation of a tangent line. Isn't that kind of neat? Kind of neat. You don't have to do the actual specific point anymore. You can find the equation of the tangent line altogether. Uh, well, at least the slope. Are there any questions before we go move on a little bit? I want to show you a couple applications of this. Yeah. So that, that's good for the entire domain of this uh, function, right? This is good for wherever the function is uh, defined. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Now, where the function, where we're going a little bit beyond where we should right now, uh, but where this is not going to work is where the function is not continuous, obviously. Because if you have gaps or jumps, there's no slope at that point, right? It just stops. One-sidedly, you can do it. Uh, so we, we, if it was continuous to the end point, you could do it. But if it jumps from point to point, well, you, you can't find this, the tangent line of that. <coughs> there is no tangent line for that. Also, sharp points are non what's called differentiable. That's finding the slope. Uh, so something, a curve that would look like this. See that sharp point? you cannot find the tangent to that point. Why? Well, theoretically, I mean, I could draw an infinite number of tangent lines through that point, right? Because it, it's not, uh, the slope, it doesn't, uh, I gotta, gotta back up to explain this, but what the slope is, is a limit going to one point, right? The slope is that limit. That means it has to exist and be the same from both directions. The slope going this way is not the same as the slope going this way. Therefore, it would fail. The limit would fail. Therefore, the finding the slope would fail. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So non-continuous points, limit fails. Sharp points, limit fails because the slopes are not the same. And that's what we're looking for. I'll explain this in much more detail later. But if you have an understanding now, well, that's great. Preview. Sneak peek. Ooh, people love those. Sneak peek. <laughs> Good question. Any other questions? You ready to see some applications? Do you have applications? Good. How to maybe use this stuff? We're going to talk about average velocity, and then we're going to talk about instantaneous velocity. We're going to see the relationship between this and this come into play again. Average velocity. If I talk about average velocity, that means average velocity. All average velocity is, is how far you've gone. Let me at least write it better for you. How far you've gone. over how long it took you to get there. How far you've gone over how long it took you to get there. Well, that's exactly what this thing that I'm about to write up there says. How far you've gone can be, well, f of t sub 0 plus h minus f of t sub 0. That's how far you've gone. Let me explain this to you in English. f gives you your position, true? Right? This is the position when you started. This is the position, position, after a little while. That's the plus h. Did you see that? Position when you started. Position after a little while, that's the plus h. Remember that plus h is a little while? This is your position after a little while. That's how far you've gone. If you have your position when you end, 
minus your position when you started, that gives you your overall displacement, your overall change. If we divide that by the time it took you to change, that's the h. This is the position when you started. This is the position after a little while divided by the little while you were traveling. In other words, displacement over time. That's what that says. That right there, that gives you average velocity. Now, here's the correlation between what we've just done. Think about this. What was this? What was this, this part? This is slope, for sure. This is actually, ignore the limit, okay? This is slope between two points. Do you understand? That's slope between two points. This is instantaneous slope at one point. Do you see the difference? When you get the h zero. This right here is average velocity. It's just the slope between two points. That's how you find the average value, right? You take the slope between two points. That's it. That's what that is. It's the average velocity, just the slope between two points. That's how you find an average. Uh, so let, let's do one, and then I'll show you how to translate this into instantaneous velocity. And you're going to see such a, a connection here. Are you ready for it? So let's, let me walk you through how to find out average velocity between a couple points. So what if I said find average velocity of Here's a position curve according to time. On the interval, let's do one three. I want to do right now is simply find average velocity. Average velocity is a slope between two points. Now this, this will give it to you. So what we need to find again is f of t sub 0 plus h and f of t sub 0. But before we do that, we, we might want to identify what is t sub 0 and what is h. So t sub 0 should be your starting time. t sub 0 is starting time. What's your starting time? No, it's not 0. Your starting time. Where'd you start? You started at one. Yeah, that's where you started. H is kind of like elapsed time. Okay, it's how much time has passed between when you want to start and when you want to end on this position curve. So, can you tell me how much time has passed? How much is my H? Not three. Mm -hmm. It would be three if we went from zero to three. But we're not. We're going from one to three. How much time has passed? Two. 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 Due to the subtraction. Three minus one is? H is two. You okay with this so far? All right. Now that we have our T sub zero equals one, our h equals 2, watch what we can do here. What we want to find out, and you're going to see that this is just the slope formula again. Remember, we created this from the slope formula, right? That's all we did. This is only a slope formula. Average velocity then equals f of, give me t sub 0 plus h. What is t sub 0? Plus, how much is h? Minus f of what's uh, what's f of t sub zero f of what again? All over h. How much is h? I can't afford to lose you right now. I need you all to be with me on this. Do you see where this one was coming from? How about this two? How about this one, this two, this one, and that two? Huh? <laughs> yeah. So t sub zero plus h t sub zero plus h. We got it. F of t sub zero all over h. You're going to notice that when we're not allowing our h to go to zero, we have a legitimate h because there's a legitimate distance between these points. Do you see what I'm talking about? This is the difference between average velocity and what we're going to do in a minute, instantaneous velocity. Instantaneous says 
what's the time between an instant? Well, it's pretty darn close to zero. Right now, we actually have a legit time, right? We have two seconds, that, or two whatever this is, two units of time. Can you realize that when you do this, this is f of 3 minus f of 1 all over 2. You with me on that? 2. Let me, don't change your paper, but just watch. 3 minus 1. That's still 2, right? Do you see that this is, this is slope formula? That's all this is. f of 3 says, oh, well, that's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's what this is. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Do you guys see the slope formula in that? That's all that is. Slope formula is just the average between two points. If it's talking about velocity, the slope formula, this way, we're doing this way so we can take a limit in just a minute to get instantaneous, but the slope formula just gives you the average velocity. That's it. Do you guys see the slope formula? They're kind of neat, right? It looks funky, but that's just y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. How do you find f of 3? Yeah, plug that in. Why don't you do that for me right now? Plug in f of 3, tell me what you get. Oh, you know what? Shoot. I got so confused with my Fs. What should that letter really be? S. Okay, thank you. You know, you can stop me and tell me when I do things like that. It doesn't hurt my feelings. But I hear from your erasures that you all did the same thing, huh? All right. That should really be S, because we're talking about a position curve. We're talking about the S function. So S of 3, S of 1. What is S of... Three, plug in three, what do you get? Negative eight. Negative eight? Negative eight? Okay. Negative eight minus, uh, what's S of one? I don't know, you tell me. It's like two. How much is that? Say what? Negative five. Negative five, that means we're going up or going down. Our displacement's changing on average from natively. So we're, we're somehow dropping in our, in our position. Um, if you, I asked you to find average speed, how would you find average speed? Maybe you don't know. Average speed is the absolute value of, of average velocity. So where velocity has a vector, right, it's vector driven, which means like you have a, a direction and a magnitude, um, speed is not. Speed is just the magnitude. So for instance, if I said the average velocity is negative five feet, per, whatever we are, feet per second, the average speed would just be five feet per second. Are you with me on that? So that's our, this is our average velocity. What it says is, are we always going negative 5 feet per second? No, but on average we are from one point to the next. That's what this says. If I change this, would this stuff change? Could you still do it? Sure, you understand, it's still, it's just slow. All this is just slow. Okay, I'm not going to do this one for you. It's the same thing. Now what we're going to do, let's make the jump about instantaneous velocity. 